got some new teasers in the new book. It's a dab in Chica. What's going on guys? Dorko back again. Hope you are fantastic today. And I was going to wait a few months to make a video on this. Basically, a new book has been released. It's the Five Nights at Freddy's Survival Log Book, which has just came out. Um, but it, it comes out in three months in the UK. It comes out in March 2018. But I've um, been looking on Reddit and stuff, and people have got it already. I, 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 what are you doing? How, how did you get that so early for? <laughs> Mario Bros 612 has photocopied the specific key parts in this book. It's a survival journal, so it's an interactive book where you can write down things and write down notes and you can draw things in it, but it's not just that. There's actually some darker parts in it. The journal we get was actually owned by Mike. And if you guys haven't been following the track of the FNAF games at the moment, Mike, Michael Afton, is very important. So yeah, this is what I basically meant. Um, this is your survival journal. So there's a night one, night two, night three, night four, night five, and you have to do your address and stuff, pretending that you're the new night guard um, at the pizzeria. It's pretty cool. And you just write, it's an interactive book, like I said, so you write down stuff about what you think. The, an, an interesting part about this is that the drawings are actually in the Five Nights at Freddy's Free office. Whether that's intentional or not, I don't know. But I'm not going to take the drawings as law-based. Um, we're just going to keep the writing and stuff and the secrets in this book more, you know, law-based than drawings. Because, you know, whether we got this book in the FNAF Free office, I don't know. Um, but, you know, the FNAF Free office is drawn, so I don't really get that. Don't get it. This is Mike's writing, guys. As you can see here, this is Mike's writing. Remember that. Anything in this book that is written in red, it's key at the start, Mike is written in red, bold. Anything written in red is Michael, okay? Remember that. It's not us. It's not the bite victim. This is Michael. And he says he likes to chew gum excessively. That's one of his habits. Okay. Well, when we're playing the FNAF games, we don't hear this in the background. <laughs> oh god, but there's a bit of humor as well in this like Michael's having a few d jokes now and then Well, here are the knights by the way. This isn't this isn't in order by the way These are just the high like the key points in this book for me um, and what Mario bros has shown as well This is his key points. I don't want to show all the book obviously because you're not gonna buy it um, And I don't want to do that to Scott. I've bought it now by the way. I went on Barnes and Noble Barn, Barn and Nobles, Barn and Nobles in Australia, and it's coming next week. So, yeah, you can go and get it now. Um, but yeah, look, it says, what are you doing here? That's very good. <laughs> so there's a bit of humour in this, but seriousness as well. Like, what are you doing here? And congratulations, this is the last night as well. Um, we can't believe you've made it this far. What would it take to get you to come back next week? And like little humor like that, like I said, it's a, it's a survival logbook. Now, uh, here's a nice picture of the puppet as well. Um, very cool. Um, but this is interesting as well. When a PR disaster strikes, it's always good to have a plan. Think of alternative explanations to these common misunderstandings. Alternative explanations. So basically, an excuse on what happened. And this is interesting. My child said Freddy bit him, and Mike said he tripped and fell on Freddy's teeth. Not our fault. But this is an alternate explanation. This isn't the truth. Basically, the, <laughs> the book's telling us to lie about these things. <laughs> My child went missing. <laughs> the animal is... The, the animatronic is filthy and using liquid. Like, you just got to write excuses. Again, guys, this is just to show... Um, an activity book just to show you guys it is an activity book and um, but um this one's very interesting and this is what i wanted to talk about in the background so not red writing very faintly in the book you see different handwriting and it's faded and this one's very interesting the party was for you the party was for you now people are saying that this is the boy victim I don't know, we don't know really, but this, the pie was for you, but the pie was for you, bite victim, it was your birthday. 
It's the same with the... If this is referring to Happiest Day as well, um, where Golden Freddy is the last victim and we all come and save everybody. Um, because to me, the bite victim is Golden Freddy. I've always said it and loads of people think the same. The bite victim has to be Golden Freddy by now. Um, it makes the most sense. But why would the bite victim say the party was for you when it was his party? So, I'm still a bit iffy on who's writing this. I don't know. It is different handwriting. Could be Mike again. It could be Mike, but it's different writing and it's faded and it's not red. So, think about that. We'll, we'll keep going on with this. Um, again, guys, here's more evidence that this is Mike. And this book is after Sister Location when Mike's got scooped. Casual bongos, and there's a picture of Baby as well in the book. But the casual bongos is drawn by Mike. And we know Casual Bongos is from Sister Location. There's actually another section about this as well, which proves that this book um, was created after Sister Location. And here we go, guys. This is what you all wanted. Chica dabbing. Bonnie doing that. Foxy doing that. And Freddy doing that. <laughs> You're part of the Freddy Fazbear family now. Draw yourself into the photos below. Again, this is very interesting as well. These um, notepads... These don't seem to be from Mike. They seem to be from somebody after Mike had it. Um, it's in the start as well that um, it says to us, oh, someone had this book before you. You don't mind, right? This one as well. I'm, I'm interested in to see who is doing these notebooks to say, don't mention the Springlock suits and stuff like that. It could be anybody. could be Phone Guy, because you know what Phone Guy is like. Is, oh, don't worry about this and this and this. Um, we don't know. It could just be a normal employee um, trying to hide the evidence from Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. It could be anybody. Chica's very angry at her cherry laptop. Um, just drawings, like I said. Don't really want to canonise these uh, <laughs> these drawings much. Interesting that um, Mike has crossed out security of security threats and changed it to animatronic. It shows that Michael has had a lot of experience dealing with these animatronics trying to kill him. Here's another interesting one, guys, which links back to Five Nights at Freddy's 4. I think we've talked about this one before. Was your favourite childhood toy a plastic purple telephone? This plastic purple telephone, that's a tongue twister, is in Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Five Nights at Freddy's 4 on the floor. It's blue. It's got a blue base, but the telephone on top is purple, and it's a toy as well. Remember that, guys. Remember that right now, please. Thank you. Because it gets even deeper in about... It gets even deeper. This is the first hint I wanted to talk about, about Five Nights at Freddy's 4. It's right there. Purple phone on the floor. There. Who's he talking to? Is the bite victim talking to Mike? That's interesting. So is the bite victim saying, was your favourite childhood toy a plastic purple telephone, Mike? Or is that... Is Mike talking to the bite victim? It's really hard to say. It's there's, there's different interpretations you can have about this writing. Here's a cool little comic strip. Um, again, I'm not going to canonise this because it looks like the Five Nights of Freddy's free office, so I'm not going to say anything. It's just a cool comic and you have to finish it off. But I'm not going to talk about it because I don't want you guys to get confused. Because <laughs> it's the FNAF free office. Depressed Bonnie. Ah, oh, employees get free pizza. There you go. Here's a very interesting one again. Do you miss them? What is that about? Do you miss your friends? Do you miss your family? Do you miss your plushy friends? The bite victim. Do you miss your plushy friends? You know, these are my friends. Do you miss them? It's interesting. Again, you can make as many interpretations as you want about this. It's not solid. Um, so, it's it just seems weird to me. Honestly, it seems to me that Mike's talking to the bite victim. But that's just me. Because why would the bite victims be talking to us when... He can't write. Because he's dead. I don't know. It's hard to know, isn't it? It's very difficult, but... I feel like it's the... Us talking to the bite victim more than the bite victim talking to us. Again, this is pretty cool. At the end of each night, you get like a, a, an event log and you describe what's happened if there's anybody's died or anything, the incident report, and you write your how your shift went. Here's another very interesting one just to prove that this book was made after Mike got scooped in Sister Location. Exotic Butters. Mike drew this and he wanted a basket of cash instead of a basket of exotic butters. Proving that this is after Michael's uh, tragic uh, 
tragic scooping moment in sister location. So it shows that Mike went back to a facility after he got scooped. Again, guys, a very, very interesting and important one. There's a drawing of psychic friend Fredbear, or the Fredbear plushie in Five Nights at Freddy's 4, which again, we know he's canon anyway. I know that we saw him originally in the mini games, but we know he is real because in the sister location office, the private room, he's there sitting on the desk. Um, people thought obviously that he might have been um, an, an illusion by the child when Five Nights at Freddy's 4 came out. A sister location blew that theory out the way. He's real and he's in the book as well. But the interesting thing is, next to it, it says, does he still talk to you? Does he still talk to you? It's just obvious that he's talking about the um, plushie here because it's wrote next to the plushie. Um, it's just basically saying that the, the Fredbear plushie in the Five Nights at Freddy's 4 minigame was literally speaking to the bite victim was speaking to him 100%. He wasn't imagining it, he was speaking to him. Now, this one is big. Very, very, very big, okay? Very big. So the logbook asks if we have, we've had any recent dreams. Recent dreams, recent. As you can see, Mike has drew Nightmare Fredbear. Mike has drew Nightmare Fredbear on the recent dreams. I think this pretty much confirms that Mike, we're playing as Mike in Five Nights at Freddy's 4 and it seems to be a dream but not a dream because we know in Sister Location that the FNAF 4 rooms are real, like the FNAF 4 rooms are real, they are canon. In the Sister Location room we see them on the cameras, the rooms are real, they are there, but it's interesting how um, Mike has had recent dreams and he's drew Nightmare Fredbear. A very interesting theory about this is um, Michael had this logbook when he was in Five Nights at Freddy's 1. So when he joined the facility again, when he came back after this location, when he was scooped, he worked at Five Nights at Freddy's 1 office as Mike Schmidt, but he had this logbook during his time there and um, he had dreams of the nightmare animatronics in the testing in the rooms um, the reason why people think that is because um, it's got the same mechanics as Five Nights at Freddy's 1 so um, foxes behind closet or curtains um, Freddy's hidden in the shadows and um, Bonnie comes from the left and Chica comes from the right exactly the same as Five Nights at Freddy's 1 um, and people are saying that during his night shifts in FNAF 1, maybe when he's back home after his night shift, he goes to bed and he has dreams about the FNAF 4 rooms. Guys, even if that's complete ball poo, what I've just said, it doesn't matter. Mike drew Nightmare Fredbear, which means Mike knows about Nightmare Fredbear, whether it was a real animatronic or whether it was in his dreams. It's just interesting how he put it as recent dreams and he drew Nightmare Fredbear there. It's interesting now, though, is that he's, someone said, do you have dreams? Like, it, it, it's hard to say, is this, again, someone speaking to Mike? Or are we speaking to the bite victim? We don't know. It's complicated. We need to know who's writing this stuff in the background. It faded away. Now, this is a very interesting page in the book. Do any of these toys look familiar to you? A bike? A telephone? A doll, Jack in the Box. Also, interestingly, it says my name here as well. I don't notice any of those familiar, apart from the telephone again. The telephone's there, but it's not the same one as FNAF 4. And then at the bottom, it says, do one of these belong to you? So, whoever's wrote this faded has changed what he said and says, do one of these belong to you? I'm going to say the phone or the flashlight. Those are the only ones I recognise anyway. <laughs> Something cool here as well is that Michael wants to go on um, a vacation. He wants money, a water ski and a speedboat. It's interesting how he's kept his humour after he's got scooped. Very blurred again at the bottom right corner. Um, it says my name and it points to page 52. If you noticed as well, the pages are not in order. 
Um, so the, that page on the left is 28, but this one's 52. Again, interesting babies there singing. Bonnie's playing the guitar. Now that you have your song down, draw the animatronics moving to the beat. But at the bottom it says, is this song familiar to you? Again, um, this is again confirming about Sister Location that Mike was in Sister Location and this is set after Sister Location. Michael talks about the Immortal and the Restless, um, which he watched during the end shift of, of Sister Location. Interesting drawing as well is that the puppet's giving a child a birthday cake. Uh, reminds me of Happiest Day to me personally. And also the hidden text as well. Do you remember your name? Or it's Michael talking to someone else. Because Michael does remember his name because he put Mike on the front cover. So it's kind of like weird. It's confusing, really confusing this book is. Um, but yeah, it's still interesting. Like, this is new. This is fresh and new, guys. So my brain isn't going to handle all of this all at once. It's going to take some time and thinking, which is why I wanted to do a video for you guys so you guys can get involved as well. <laughs> uh, the... <laughs> the book asks, uh, what will your life look in five years? And Michael has drew a tombstone with his name on. Interestingly, he hasn't put Mike um, because...